Welcome to July Asset News, take top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a pretty full day. First up, we're going to talk about what happened yesterday in our second part of the MicroStrategy World Now uh, seminar. So I'm going to talk about uh, the second half of what was going on leading into today, where we're going to have people uh, coming in and talking to all the corporations such as Binance and Gemini and Coinbase. So that'll be interesting. Also, take a look at the uh, report that small and medium hodlers control 40% of the Bitcoin supply, says data. And this kind of blows the, uh, the whole theory out of the water that everything is, is centralized and is in the hands of just a few whales. So we're going to take a look at some data that's, uh, take, that uh, shows positively uh, that that doesn't happen. And lastly, take a look at PayPal Q4 transaction revenue. Rose almost 12% in the first quarter report since adding crypto. And you have to remember, uh, PayPal just came on uh, at the end of November, early December of 2020, and they haven't even gotten into Venmo and some other big markets like outside the U.S. So this is the uh, interesting stuff to take a look at. And uh, we'll do all that today. But first, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is, geez, what is it? February 4th, uh, 8.40 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And here's what we got. Uh, not too much of uh, of big play in the top five or so. Uh, XRP is up six percent. Ta-da! Great, uh, but uh, sure. Thirty-six five for Bitcoin, uh, Binance Coin four percent. But look at Doge, another pump of fifty percent. And I don't know if it's because of what this was actually on my Twitter feed. <laughs> this was uh, Elon Musk, and he put another stupid meme out, and just that little bit of news may have actually pumped up Doge. For no apparent reason other than the fact that, uh, you know, Elon Musk said something about it. So uh, good for all you Doge holders. <laughs> I, I still don't understand it. But okay. And let's see what else we got. 33% for Aave. It looks pretty good. EOS. Ah, nobody cares about EOS. And then uh, Uma. 135% up. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if there's a new partnership being announced uh, for that DeFi project, but that'll be interesting to see. Compounds also at 20%. Sushi up 7%. So you see a lot of things that are going on with the uh, DeFi space which is pretty good. But uh, if you may have noticed, we're using uh, Trade the Chain. I like about this is it, you know, it, it does uh, sentiment analysis. It doesn't just give us like the basic type of stuff. And then there's this cool thing called uh, projection range. And what this does is I still think that news moves uh, the whole market. And uh, I like using this little tool uh, because I can do stuff like this. They're going to, let me click on that. And it'll tell us uh, in a 90% accuracy, what it, what it thinks is going to happen uh, within the next uh, hour. So I don't know what this is. Swiss board, hmm. 4%. Next hour, it's going to move between negative 1% all the way up to 10%. And uh, the way it does this, again, sentiment analysis, it crawls all the uh, websites, all the different blogs, and also has a direct API into Twitter. So it takes a look at what's going on and gives us a sentiment. So that's interesting. Luna, i never heard of that. Uh, Divi. Let me see if I can minimize this. Let me just blow it up. How about that? There we go. Yeah, nice. Let's see. Uma, UMA, uh, 13%. Swipe, never heard of that. Guinea, Augur, Binance Coin. So yeah, this is this is why I like to use this tool because it can just kind of tell us, uh, you know, what the sentiment is right now. And then also what I like to see is, is the uh, one hour change. Because if it's, if it's already pumped up a ton, that might not be a good idea to, uh, to get into that. But you can see the 24-hour change looking pretty good. So uh, if you want to take more, a bigger look at that, there's a link in the description. And uh, that's it. So anyhow, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. huh? So the first up, we've got the uh, MicroStrategy Seminar, which was pretty good yesterday. We did a video about it. And uh, it's very bullish for Bitcoin, which, you know, surprise, surprise. How, how amazing is that? But the reason that it is is because you know Michael Saylor is leading the whole thing, and he just only believes in Bitcoin, and that's and all what it all is is corporations and institutions really getting in, and just getting the playbook from MicroStrategy and going, how'd you guys do this? And they pretty much give them everything. They give them uh, PDFs. They have the CFO, the CIO, legal uh, implications, taxes, everything that you possibly need to get into Bitcoin. Believe me, they have it, and uh, they're actually doing breakout sessions right now for uh, the bigger players. So. Uh, it's uh, after this. I think there's going to be a pretty big uh, pump for uh, Bitcoin. Could be wrong. Who knows? But uh, it is interesting. And I and I did say yesterday. I, I thought that it, it will go in waves. Like I said, like some institutions are like on board right now. They just want this this little more piece of information, and then they're off and running. But I think a lot really have to put a plan in place before it happens, and it's going to take some time. And 
from what I had yesterday, let me scroll down here. I had to, uh, I, I took notes on everybody that was talking and I put, I just uh, tweeted everything out so I could actually rem remember when I did these videos. And like, this is the, the, the three things that I found fascinating yesterday on the second session. And this was from uh, Jeremy Price, senior VP of finance. And I had known this, but it really hit home when he, when he said, he goes, hey, look, at MicroStrategy, we transferred all of our cash into Bitcoin, all of our cash. Then we took out debt and put all that debt into Bitcoin as well. So I mean, like they're like huge proponents of this and uh, really just, I was like, wow, it's uh, pretty ballsy. Anyhow, this is the one that made sense to me because just like we talked about, some people, some institutions and, and corporations are ready to go. Some need a little bit more time and some will never uh, have a flight plan. They'll never, they'll never get off first base and uh, they'll just be stuck and, and they won't do anything. But the ones in the middle that are really like looking into this, this is also from Jeremy, uh, VP of Finance and MicroStrategy. He says, it took us four months to just put a plan together to go all, to go all in on Bitcoin. This is even, even after Michael Saylor was like, we got to do this, we got to do this. And he probably had some pretty good ideas. So as a corporation, they have to you know, go through legal, they have to go through finance, they have to do, every, do their due diligence, put a plan in place, get places like Coinbase to help them do these microtransactions and then execute. And they were like the first ones to really do it. Now that they've done it, I think you can probably cut that time in half, especially with what's going on. But again, it took them four months to put a plan together and two months to execute. Board approval, IT considerations, onboarding vendors, everything else. So six months right there, you, if you can cut in half, you're still looking at three months. It's, it, there are no overnight successes. And I think with these corporations, they're gonna you know, really take a look at it and go, okay, well, let's do this or let's not do this. And um, Ross Stevens from NYDIG, he gave a really great presentation. He said, look, he goes, the biggest question that the CEOs at this conference are gonna have to ask themselves is when are they going to transfer their fiat into Bitcoin? Not if, but when. And he goes, right now, you don't think that is the big question, but it will be the next big question in the next decade. And, uh, you know, we'll see if he's right, but uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And then uh, lastly, this is when they had, uh, they had a bunch of different people, but uh, Jeremy Price was leading this, this breakout session. He says, you'll be happy to know there is Bitcoin insurance. That's what custodial insurance is for, but you should also get supplemental insurance just to be safe. So um, they're, they're telling them that they were saying like, like look, you, you, it's not a good idea to put everything on cold storage and get a ledger for like billions of Bitcoin. You should really have a custodian and then also just to make sure that you, you know, uh, nothing bad happens, you also get insurance. And they pretty much just laid it out. And then they, they gave out PDFs for everybody to download. And I have them, I'll, we'll go over those later. But uh, it was just an uh, interesting piece. And then today we're going to, this was the one that I was interested in. They're going to have, uh, like I said, Binance will be there, Gemini will be there. Uh, and uh, I cannot wait for Coinbase to sit up there and say, hey, we can help you guys out. So if you don't think that all these all these entities are really raw rawing for these corporations. Uh, I think you're mistaken. I think all these guys want to get in and they want their business badly. And uh, we'll see how that affects us, the retail player, as they start to onboard all these corporations. Uh, we saw what happened with Coinbase. I don't think Coinbase is really, you know, really here for us uh, so much. So just look at their customer support. Just saying, but uh, not, not that I have anything against them. I don't, I, I mean, I talk bad about them uh, every so often. <laughs> But I don't have anything against them. Like, look, if you're new to this space, just use Coinbase. It's super simple. And uh, you don't have to really deal with too much. Just use PayPal. It's even simpler than that. Yeah, there's markup, but who cares? There's a lot of things to, to consider. Just make it easy on yourself. Just get in right now and then uh, learn a little bit more. Go to uh, danjuicecrypto.com. That's a 100% free website. And you can learn everything you need to know about cryptocurrency. Anyhow, let me make sure you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our, our next piece. So, Next up, this was pretty interesting because there's been a lot of articles talking about the centralization of Bitcoin. Brad Garlinghouse being one of those who said that China, as far as miners, control everything. They control the whole, pretty much the whole Bitcoin uh, infrastructure and the, uh, uh, the Chinese, uh, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. So when I said this, I'm like, huh, oh, this is interesting. What do we got? Well, data from Glassnode. Uh, shows that a number of smaller Bitcoin holders and those holding coins on behalf of clients uh, keeps growing. Longtime Bitcoin holders known as, this was weird, longtime Bitcoin holders known as humpbacks in reference to their status as the largest 
and oldest well investors in the space are not cashing out. So this was data from Glassnode that they pull from different wallets and uh, everything they can find from the from blockchain. And I'm just going to blow this up so you can actually see it. Let me really blow it up. Uh, yeah. So do you see right? Yeah. Yeah. So you see right here on the right-hand side. Well, first of all, let's take a look here. So you got years. So 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way to now, right? So over here, this big, huge gray area, these are all miners. Miners controlled everything back then. And there really was not a ton of exchanges, except Mt. Gox, I guess. And uh, there wasn't really a bunch of, um, you know, big, huge whales. It was, all, it was all just the miners. And then as time went on, you had small and medium hodlers. And this is from here, and then large holders right here. And then you have this, this piece right here, which looks like humpbacks, or just like the older ones that just don't sell. My question here is, are these just people that don't sell? Or are these the people that just don't have access to their private keys anymore? Or they threw away their computers, and these Bitcoin are just completely lost? I'm not for sure on that one, but I can tell you this. I would say, from all the data that I've seen over the, over the last couple of years, uh, that we've lost a minimum of 2 million worth of Bitcoin because people just throw it away or they lost their private keys or whatever, or their mnemonic phrases. So I think a lot is being lost. So I don't know if, if those humpbacks play into that or not, but sure. But you can see here, now we have whales and you know those people are, yeah, they, they own a ton and they probably are trading a little bit, but the large or the small medium holders and large hold, holders, there's still a big piece to that equation. And then down here are the miners, then this big piece of the chunk are exchanges. So when we talk about how like, well, you know, miners, they don't, uh, you know, there's, they, they control everything, especially in China. I just personally don't believe that. And I've had um, many uh, Bitcoin miner on, not on the show, but in the comments, we've gone back and forth. Now, like, look, I can just unplug at any time and go to any different mining pool. So I don't want to get in that argument, right? It's because it's like it never ends. It just keeps going, going, going. So I'm like, ah, whatever. But uh, from what I've, what I've heard from miners, they're like, look, I can just unplug and go to something else. And uh, if you think China's going to control me, they can't. They can control all their miners and all the other exchanges over there. Sure. And if they want to do something like crash the whole uh, in industry, uh, they can wipe out that one. Will it, will it wipe out Bitcoin? No. Put a big dent in it. But uh, I think it will recover. Uh, anyhow, I don't want to even get into that. It's just a big waste of time. So uh, that is what we got here. So let me X out of here and go down. So numbers alleviate fear that we talked about. But here were the articles. And you probably know more articles that are written here. I do too. But this is the ones that uh, stood out. One, this is on January 31st. Uh, Bloomberg used a report from research uh, token an anal analyst. From entity token analyst. Okay. Declaring that Bitcoin's infrastructure is more centralized than ever before. And this was raising alarms about the security and, and viability of what is championed as a decentralized network. And before I get into Scott Melker, I just want to say this. You have to understand. Um, I don't know who's doing this. I don't know who's doing the actual articles. But you see all the institutions that are getting in, especially with what we just talked about with uh, MicroStrategy. If all these institutions are getting in, and I'm a multi-billion dollar company, and I want as much Bitcoin as MicroStrategy, or as Galaxy Digital, or whoever you want, you have to look around and go, how much are there? There's only 18 and a half million mined so far, and we've lost 2 million, so there's like 16 and a half million. Okay. Who else is here? These are all big people. I don't want to compete against all these people. I can't beat everybody, but what I can do is I can wind back time and I can talk, to, reach out to my, to my friends at XYZ publication or on this place or on that place. And I can put out an article. It's not illegal just to say, hey, look at this data. Look at what's going on. And then you can start to see retail start to sell. And then because if the small to medium hodlers have 40%, what do you think they want? They want to crash this market or they want to get an, enough FUD to make sure that you sell and you give it to, to these guys because they don't want to buy it at 150000 They want to buy it at 30000 25000 20000 So just be aware. Now, not financial advice, but I see how this could be a thing. Let me know what you think in the comment section, but that's just kind of how I see it. It uh, frightened me, but uh, who knows. So now let's get into uh, Scott Melker. He's the Wolf of All Streets on Twitter. Pretty, uh, 
pretty prominent figure in the Bitcoin community or cryptocurrency community. And he talks about this. He says, big buyers will sell eventually. Big buyers will sell eventually. And he says, such, such a scenario is a matter of if, not when. And the idea that institutions will hodl ad infinitum or infinity is a myth. Uh, Mike, he references micro, micro strategy and grayscale. And pretty much what he's saying here is like, look, they say they're never going to sell. He goes, but that's a myth. At some point, they're going to sell a little bit. He goes, regardless of all the reports servicing about the hedge funds exploring Bitcoin, it is our belief most are going to lock in profit at some point, whether they own uh, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or custody their own coins. So our answer is yes. Institutions will sell their Bitcoin. He wrote, it's reasonable to believe, though, that many companies and funds will add Bitcoin to their balance sheet in some denomination as an inflation hedge rather than a short-term profit opportunity, leaving some Bitcoin off the market for good. So you have a wide range of people talking about this. Michael Saylor has been talking about Bitcoin and saying, look, I'm not going to sell it ever, ever. I'm going to keep it forever. All right. And then you've got Mass Mutual, you know, that uh, big older type of insurance company going, yeah, we're not going to sell it. Uh, but they didn't say like forever. And then you've got Galaxy Digital and uh, Grayscale. Who knows when, you know, they, they might do it. But again, Grayscale isn't just holding it by themselves. It goes to other people. Other people buy it and they just hold it for them. That's why there's a premium for that. So I know when people talk to me like, Rob, you should never sell any of your, of your, uh, of your crypto because it's just going to keep going to the moon and it'll never stop and it's going to infinity and beyond. And I'm like, I don't think that's true. Uh, I think Bitcoin's a pretty good play. Altcoins, who knows? Who knows where BitTorrent is going to go or who knows where Tron is going to go or EOS or whatever else you think, you know? Like, do you think that all these institutions are going to be like, you know what, I'm going to just... Uh, grab onto that and hold it. I'm not going to sell at any time, at any point. Really? So, I don't know about that. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. It's always interesting to read as I talk about these uh, institutions never selling. And then let's go on to our last snippet. All right. So last up, PayPal Q4 transaction revenue rose 12%. This was a quick article. Just so you know, PayPal is making a lot of money. <laughs> that's, uh, that's like the big thing. Uh, final quarter of 2020, PayPal gained 16 million in, in new net active accounts, and they handled 277 billion. It, and just as a reminder, on November 12th is when they removed the wait list for Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin. So when I talk about Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin, these are the ones that I'm thinking to myself, you, sh you can't bet against those because they're on PayPal. And PayPal has, you know, millions of merchants and they have over like 345 million, I, I think, uh, people who actually use PayPal around the world. So why would you bet against that? And they have only gotten to the United States. Mind you, they haven't gotten globally yet. So they haven't rolled this out. And they will. And I think it's going to be big. Anyhow, uh, customers who purchase crypto with the platform have been logging to PayPal twice as much as they were before buying crypto, the company said in its investor update. And PayPal's transaction revenue increased by around 12%, uh, and then year over year. I will say this. So it, they rolled this out in um, 2020 Q4, and they had $5.68 billion. It'll be interesting to see how much their transaction revenue uh, actually goes up for next quarter. But uh, yeah, it's grown a little bit. Good for them. <laughs> billion. Sure. Anyhow. To finish up, it says the volume of crypto trade on our platform greatly exceeded our projections, PayPal, PayPal CEO Dan Schulman said on the company's fourth quarter earnings call. We're excited to build in this early success by allowing customers to use their crypto balance as a funding source. We hope to launch our first international market in the next several months. So you got to understand, so uh, PayPal is going to be huge and they're going to just keep pushing this narrative. Once they roll this out to merchants, I think that's when it's really game on for them because for all those transactions, because when this first started up, there was no transaction fees when you wanted to buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin. But that changed and now there are transaction fees. So when you're going to use this, when people actually buy cryptocurrency and they go to a merchant and go, hey, I want to buy some shoes with Litecoin, sure, you all day, but they're not using the Litecoin. Remember, it's all just paper Litecoin. It's just... They're buying it up and in the background, they're doing the whole thing and they're transacting with, with fiat. So there is no slippage, there is no volatility, but they get to keep all that cryptocurrency and they're gonna pay, you're gonna have to pay a transaction fee for that, uh, me and the, uh, me as a merchant and, me, and you as the buyer. So 
just be aware uh, they're going to make a ton of money doing this and uh, that is really what drives the market is it uh, right is it fair it's free market there is <laughs> if you want to use it you can use it and uh, a lot of people are going to because not everybody wants to deal and when i had because of dan teaches crypto i realized people are all different which it's kind of a stupid phrase but it is the truth uh, everybody's different everybody has their own ability to comprehend things or their ability to do things because of time constraints right if you're a single mom with three kids and two jobs you do not have time to deal with you know figuring out a ledger doing all the updates making sure you don't get hacked doing all the right steps and everything else you're like you know what screw it just give me coinbase or something like that where i can put on there they can deal with it and if it goes up fantastic i gotta go take jimmy to soccer practice so there's only so much people can do right so like with paypal I'm not going to rip on him for that. That's what it is. And actually, I had a friend of mine, uh, Jasmine. She she texted me a couple, was it? yeah, yesterday. She goes, hey, is Ethereum a good thing to invest in? Which I'm sure you guys have probably done the same way. Uh, and I just like, yeah, sure. What do you want to do? She's like, should I get it on PayPal? I'm like, sure. Because I don't want to go with like, you know, you should really go through through a, a, an analog ledger and you can buy it over here and it's $100. And then when it gets here in two weeks, then you can do this and this. Oh, the, but there was also a hack. So, uh, you know, watch just use pay just i'm like ugh. just use paypal go to dante's crypto at some point and then learn the rest of it and then maybe you can just take baby steps because everybody's everybody's different and far be it from me to say you need to do it this way because i say so it's not it's not the case anyhow that's it for today uh it's uh we'll finish up at nine in the morning got another hour until i get to listen to binance swindle all these uh, institutions not swindle but you know sell these institutions and uh, for their custodial services and that's it for today so hey if you made it all the way to the end uh maybe share the thumbs up that'd be great maybe you liked it and maybe you should subscribe now uh, just a suggestion all of our things that we talk about are pretty much time sensitive so help me help you everybody's a winner right also if you like these types of videos me two more is going to pop up on your left and right i'll let youtube do its magic and that is all for today so thanks so much uh, for watching all the way end i appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one